Hi there, this is exercise 5a. Uh, technically, I suppose it's 5a.2 because uh, we've done a bit of this already. And we're going to look at um, the, the idea that we are trying to uh, be able to distinguish between these three linear equations, which effectively represent planes, um, as, as this picture up here implies, you know, the variety of different versions of this. And whether these three uh, equations three planes are such that we get just one solution like this example here we just got one solution where they all cross in one pretty little place or whether there's a myriad of other op options and which one of these is the um, the final version um, we're interested in. and in particular whether the solutions to these non-unique solutions whether they are consistent or inconsistent that's really what we're after so we've already looked at some of this so I won't dwell on this for too long maybe this actually just reminder that um, when you get um, a situation like this, and I think we, we can see that if you multiply this equation by 1.5, you get the same number every time. And so effectively, these two equations were the same. And when the, you get a repeated equation, effectively, we call that infinitely many solutions, effectively, because you've got some kind of something going on. And it's a consistent system. Now, this is only two dimensions. Um, this one, when you do the same trick, um, you times it one by 1.5, you times 19 by 1.5, obviously you don't get 30. And in that si situation, you get an inconsistent um, solution. So um, this then applied, and this is what we were doing last time. We, um, this then applies to um, three equations as well. And I think I left it last time there. So let's look at the next question and see what we do. And of course, these all have these funny letters in. So straight away, we've got a bit of math to do right, on some of these. Find in terms of A, the determinant of A. Well, um, determinant of A equals, um, it's A times by and this. So it's A minus four minus the next A times by the naught by the one, which is naught minus the two by the one, which is two, okay? Plus a minus one times by naught times two is naught and minus a. So that is a squared minus four a. Um, <clears throat> this effectively is plus two a. And this is plus an a, I think. And so I end up here with a squared minus a, I think, is my solution. Um, three simultaneous equations are shown below. So we've got, now you can bet your bottom dollar, it's exactly the same. Yes, it is. It's exactly the same matrix. So effectively, um, you've got a, a minus one, zero, a, two, one, two, one. And it's times by x, y, z. And the only difference now is we've got the right hand side. We're told that that is equal to minus 1, 2a, and 1. But of course, we still don't know what a is. For each of the following values of a, all right, they're now going to tell me what a is. So when a is 0, so let's just do this. When a equals 0, you can see if I put 0 into that, the determinant is 0 squared minus 0 is 0. So this will give me a um, straight away I know for part a then here. This is a non-unique solution. Non-unique because straight away I'm getting some dodgy determinant of zero. Um, now, when I do that, let's just write these equations out with um, with zeros in here. It's a bit, it's a bit basic, really. So I've got zero x, zero y, and I've got minus z equals minus one. All oh, right, z equals one. So I know exactly what z is. Now, what about the other ones? Though so I've got 2z equals 2 times by 0. Oh, right, look, z equals 0 now. Now, it can't be both of them, surely. So this is an inconsistent system. We, we've got some rather nasty um, equations which give different um, uh, solutions, so therefore it's an inconsistent solution. I think that's fairly straightforward. Let's try the b case. Well, now a is 1. Well, a is 1, I get the determinant now is 1 squared minus 1, which is still 0. So we've got a non-unique solution again. Um, 
let's put one into these equations. So I might need to make some space in a bit, but at the moment I'll go with it. I'll get x plus y minus z, obviously with ones in here, you see, equals minus one. The next one says y plus two z equals two. And the next one says x plus two y plus z equals one. So just looking at that, you see, I'm just wondering, um, they're not the same, but they, they are, I'm just going to number these just to make it more obvious what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm, what I'm tempted to do is to add question, um, equation one to three. I don't know what I've done in my solutions. We'll find out in a bit. So if I do that, do, am I, no, I'm actually I'm going to subtract. So let me do, um, I just realize what I want to do. I want to do three take away one. So x take away x, if I do 3 take away 1, will give me nothing. 2y take away a y will give me a y. And a z take away a minus z will give me 2z. And a 1 take away a minus 1 will give me 2. You know, I've repeated my equation. And that's the critical thing, I think. So therefore, I can say this is a consistent. Effectively, the third equation which I actually I call that equation two equation two matches the results I get with one and three so it's a consistent solution I suppose and I've got this third one when a is two well let's first of all clear my screen because otherwise I won't have any room at all um, okay so for C I've got to term there uh, sorry a is now two now I had a squared minus a for the determinant, so this implies that my determinant now is 2 squared is 4 minus 2 equals 2. And therefore, I've, this is non-singular, and therefore I've got a solution. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be lying, I'm going to probably cheat a bit here. I'm going to chuck this into my calculator. I've got a calculator here. So with um, this uh, in the right mode actually by chance it is in the right mode so let's go with this so i'm going to type it in so a is one uh two yeah two and then i have to type in a is two uh two and then i've got minus one and then naught two two i just realized i had to write in the negative one on the right hand side so um doing this again and then a 2a would be 4 so I'm just typing these into my a b c d onto my calculator solving 3 by 3 simultaneous equations really and then 1 2 1 and uh, 1 on the bottom row well it's gonna be a nice answer that's a start anyway so I've got x equals minus 4 I've got y equals 3 and I've got z equals minus 1. So let's have a look at what I get. So this, by the way, is a consistent, obviously. If I ever get a unique solution, it's a consistent solution. So let's have a look what I got in my answers first time around. I suppose I better clear this as well. Um, what did I get, by the way? I've got minus 4, 3, minus 1. I'm just remembering that. So erase all that. Answers. So um, a squared, that's what I got. Um, that's exactly the way I did it. B, 1 plus 2 equals 3. Oh, I, I did it a different way. That'd be interesting. So if you add these two together, I did a subtraction of 3 take away 1. Um, last time I did this, I did that one plus that one, and you get this one. So it just goes to show you get different ways of doing the same thing. So non-unique solutions, I've said. Now, can I see that? Ah, oh, right, yeah. So they all cross in this straight line. They all cross along this straight line. So although there's lots and there's infinitely many solutions, they are consistently all on that straight line. Okay. And the last one is unique, and that's looked very similar to what I got. Yes, I agree with that. So, okay, oh, this one. And there it is. I've drawn that one as well. Who knew I was so organized? And you can see they all cross at this beautiful place here. If you draw the planes, you can see one plane like that, one coming down, one going through, but they all seem to be crossing in one particular point. Okay, next question. We've got a bit, a bit of time to do it. Very similar by the looks of it. You've got a similar scenario where they tell you um, a system, and they say, now, what happens if A is 0 or 1? So the first thing we're going to do, find the determinant. 
and it's the determinant of a11 one, one. one a one 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 two it's very similar by the looks of it from before so if i do that i get a lot of 2a minus 1 minus 1 lot of uh, 2 minus 1 hope i'm doing this right plus 1 lot of uh, 1 minus a so that looks about right to me i get 2a squared you get it looks like another one with a quadratic minus a um, that 2 minus 1 is 1 so times over that is minus 1 and plus a 1 minus a so there you go and i get 2a squared minus 2a also differently 2 lots of a squared minus 1. so straight away when i put 0 in and when i put 1 in i'm going to get different responses so um for part a when a equals 0 uh, my determinant is 0. Is that right? 2a squared minus 2a. Yep, that looks right. Will 1 also give me 0? Yeah, 1 will also give me 0. So they're both of these are going to give me um, non-unique solutions, I think. But I suppose the difference is one will be consistent and one isn't. So let's just chuck it in. Chuck the naught in here. So this is no x plus y plus z. So I'm just chucking it in there. E equals 2 naughts and 0. Next equation, so you've got x plus no y plus a z equals minus 1. And the last equation says x plus y plus 2z equals minus 1. So I'm tempted to add them together again, a bit like I didn't do last time, but my solution suggests that I should have done. So if I add these two equations, 1 plus 2, Let's number them over here. It's very common to see this in simultaneous equations. So if I add them, I think I'll get I'll get x plus a y plus a 2z equals minus 1. And it's exactly the same as equation 3. Same as 3. So we get a consistent system, a consistent solution, if you like. What we do with that is another story, but um, it just, this describes whether it has any solutions. So when b uh, equals, um, when on b a equals 1, I still, I think, get 1 squared minus 1 is 0 times by 2 is still 0. So it's 2 lots of um, 1 squared minus 1, which is 0. So it's still non-unique. But the fact that it's non-unique, as we now know, means there's two possibilities, either consistent or not consistent. So let's go through and write these equations again. So now it's 1. We've got x plus y plus z equals 2. We've got x plus y plus... Is that y? Yeah, that's right. Plus z. Oh, straight away. Look, they're different things. Um, and x plus y plus 2z equals minus 1. Um, so in my mind, I immediately notice that x plus y plus z and x plus y plus z is giving me different things. So these are, that's the dodgiest bracket ever, inconsistent solutions. Because these x plus y plus z can't be equal to two things like that. Um, and that's probably it. Let's have a look at what my answers say. Um, I've numbered them 1, 2, 3. So... First one's repeated equations, 1 plus 2 equals 3, exactly the same as I did, so non-unique and consistent. Good, we like that. And then second, oh, this was my picture. Let's clear all this off so we can see it. Right, and uh, our gain here, you can see there are gain lying on that straight line. So we've got all three planes intersecting in a straight line. Um, and this is what we're looking, we're looking out for. This is what we kind of expected. Um, and then the second one, what have you got now? Um, I've said inconsistent equations because one says x plus y. That's exactly the same as I've, I've done there. And is it where we've got a picture? Yeah, yeah, you can see actually they, they do seem to be almost two parallel planes. That's what it looks like with one plane crossing them. Um, look, that's what you've got to do in lesson. So exercise 5a, I want you to attack the textbook, page 103 to 104, and see how much you can get done. Thank you very much.